is Tanner Podcast number four. Um, so far, we've brought to you guys a uh, general discussion about kegs, Tanner kegs. Uh, kombucha was our last podcast. Before that, we did coffee. Um, what's on Andy's mind for this episode? Okay, so um, what I thought we might talk about, we talk a little bit about wine in kegs, but also the opportunity that Patina is able to give people to actually build a business with wine. So this week we had some meetings with uh, a, someone that we dealt with for some time in Chicago. And uh, this guy's a, a wine guy. He likes wine. He knows a lot about wine. But he's not a vin he doesn't have a vineyard. He doesn't produce wine at all. And he really wanted to get into the marketplace with wine and distribute it locally. And, and he's always been a big fan of kegged wine. So uh, what this guy does is he actually purchases the wine, <coughs> excuse me, on the bulk market. Uh, and you, you can get it in totes. You can get it almost in tankers or whatever. Right. Uh, even in, in barrels. Uh, it's already sterile. Well, all the fittings are sterile. And he goes to, uh, he sort of rents out a facility somewhere, uh, runs the uh, wine through a um, filtration system, through a pump, uh, through a machine, which actually is ours. And uh, we've actually lent out Dave with the machine to, to, to assist him. And he fills those kegs, or fills our kegs, I should say. And then he goes around and he sells them locally to bars. So it's a, bus a good business model. He's making very good money at it. Um, he's now going to a distributor, which will ex expand considerably. But, you know, th this is also something we've lo been looking at on the bulk market for maybe wineries that are not even in the country, say um, in Chile or or somewhere else, uh, they can send the wine over in bulk. Yeah. Uh, putting it into keg makes perfect sense because it's a it's it's unique and it has a lot of other good qualities as well, which we're going to discuss. And basically, you know, the guy has made a uh, a business out of selling wine, but not actually making the wine, but putting it into kegs. A little cost, going around distributing those kegs himself and, and making a living out of it. It's a good business model that could be replicated in lots of other places. Yeah, and I love it because he's getting Finnish wine from great regions of the world. Yes, the one of the easiest ways to transport, like you said, is in a bulk container. Yeah, right, and then he's put it into smaller packages for distribution in his city or cities throughout America right sure, now, yeah. which makes me happy, guy, because we're getting killer wines from all around the world, yeah. uh, but not paying crazy bottle prices. Exactly. Um, and it's in our kegs. So then he's taking it to restaurants, banquet halls, mm. and pouring it on tap. Exactly. And I think uh, if you're a restaurant, if you're a bar, isn't it great to not have to waste uh one glass of wine in a bottle mm -hmm. anymore. Now you've got a perfect pour every single time. Right. It's going to be consistent, cutting down on your waist. Big time. Yeah. Big time. So we did some calculations, actually. And if you um, if, if you look at, say, if you took a keg of wine, uh, a 20-liter keg of wine, the packaging in that is less than four pounds. Or I think, you know, uh, and, and look at how much the... the the packaging is for bottles and the cardboard cases they come right. in. Right, yeah. Uh, corks can be an issue, of course, sometimes uh, with wine. and But it, it just just makes perfect sense. And and also, really, the beauty of, of kegged wine is pourability. You know, uh, if, if you think about, you know, you go to a, a restaurant and you say, okay, I'd like a, a glass of wine. And, you know... People have the perception that keg wine is going to be cheap wine. It's not necessarily. No. It could be high-end wines. And you, you ask for a glass of wine. So the bartender has got to go get that bottle, maybe pour the cork on that bottle, pour the glass of wine, put it back again. That's a lot of time invested in pouring that. Now, when it's on tap, quick pour, yeah. close off, sell, uh, sell the, the product, and you can have maybe 10 people in line and, and get those 10 glasses of wine out very, very quickly. And, and 
the beauty of keg wine, of course, is, like you said, with waste and so forth, the wine at the beginning of the first pour is going to be the same quality as the end of the pour, which you never get in bottle. No. Right? Yeah. You never get that in bottle. So um, if you're a banquet house, for instance, and you're doing weddings and things like that, you're going to have all these bottles on the tables, and you may end up with about 20 half bottles of wine, which is a waste. If you if you don't get rid of all the keg, you've got it for the next wedding and yeah, so forth. keep it in the cooler. So it makes sense. And then uh, you're at the banquet house, and now you've got 20 bottles mm. that you've got to go throw in the recycling bin. Exactly, yeah. Or you got to store somewhere, and you know that's not going to taste as good as, as did for Gene and Jude's uh, wedding last <laughs> week. Exactly, yeah. Um, so I just love the idea of like, now only have to do, if we do finish that keg, is recycle one keg instead of 20 random right. bottles, you know? So so one of the other things really as far as shipping costs are concerned, so say you're, you're, you know, wherever your winery is, especially if it's overseas, think of the weight and the possible breakage, et cetera, from importing that wine. Didn't even think about the breakage. Right, yeah. yeah. So and, and if you can send it somewhere in totes or in, in, in large containers and it can be then uh, kegged locally, you're saving huge amounts of money. And it can also be – because it's so easy to, to fill our kegs, and I don't mean just fill them roughly, but to fill them sanitarily and, and you know, absolutely perfectly – you don't need a lot of cost. You could do this very regionally. Yeah. So, you know, you could supply wine and package it locally for Chicago. You could do that for New York. You could do that for L.A. You don't necessarily have to package the care, uh, the product in one place. You can do that, of course, and send it out. So the, the, the savings are an astronomical. And, and if you think how much packaging costs, I mean, how much does a does, uh, – does a, a, a bottle cost to manufacture and designing a label, designing sourcing a, label. a cork that stays good and won't yeah. go bad? You don't have to worry about cork wine anymore. Exactly, yeah. Getting the cage on the top and oh, the cardboard yeah. box, yeah. paying the guy to put them in right. the box and seal them up. And exactly, yeah. Now, the other thing really is, is a lot of people don't you can put sparkling wine into kegs, and you know, we, we had some discussions about this. And if you think about it, you get a bottle of sparkling wine. You know, heavy you know, champagne or something similar. Um, you, it's very highly carbonated. You pop the cork. Yeah. Most of the carbonation in the bottle is lost when the cork you can goes see up, it. Yeah. And, and perhaps yeah. you get some fl- foam out yeah. as well. And by the time you get to the bottom of that bottle, the carbonation level is not the same as it was at the top. The beauty of keg wine, because it, you, you keep a constant CO2 pressure on the product. As you dispense it, the carbonation level will remain the same from the first pour awesome. to the end. Still getting a million bubbles. You're tiny still getting bubbles. tiny little bubbles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In fact, actually, if you wanted to, you could add to it. But it, it's, it does have uh, huge advantages. You know, if you look at it, it's huge advantages for the producer, reduces costs considerably. For the distributor, it's huge uh, reduction in cost because, first of all, it's a bigger volume. It's easier to inventory and handle, sure. less breakages and so forth, um, easy package to, to handle. And it's great also for the um, for the establishment that's, that's doing the wine, is that the losses are a lot low. It's possible with some systems now, that uh, dispense systems, that you can even meter the products. So you can pour. You press a button and it pours the exact amount. Yeah. So then there's less losses for that. And of course, you know, there's always losses where someone walks off with a bottle. Drink, sure, yeah. Right? yeah so yeah, I remember working in the bar back in the day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. A little bit left yeah. in the bottle. So yeah. I'm you, cleaning up. So now you just steal yeah. the kegs, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it's awesome. It, I, I think it, it's it's the way to go. Well, I think Adam, you know, we've discussed about a lot of products, but to me, wine, kegged wine, is is such a small part. Of the industry, and I think it's going to become so much better. Me too. And not only is it going to give um, wine producers the opportunity of making money from keg wine, like this guy, who says, "Okay, you know, I, maybe I, I, I've got a love of wine from Mexico. Maybe I, 
you know, I feel that I can sell Mexican wine in Mexican restaurants. Buying that, that um, not having to go to the, to the place where they make the wine and have them package it there in bottles or whatever and have it shipped, you can get it shipped in bulk, package it yourself, and then get it out there. So one of the other things that he's been doing, <clears throat> and we actually we, we worked uh, with another winery on this as well, is he's going to set up a facility where he has various varietals of different of certain wines. Oh yeah, yeah right? I love this. This is yeah, cool. Yeah, and he'll have them uh, on tap, maybe six or seven of them, or whatever it is, and he he conducts classes on wine. People go there. Uh, maybe they go there as part of a function, you know? Yeah, bachelorette uh, party. Bachelorette yeah. party. Yeah. And then they pour different wines and they make their own um, blend. And then they, they can have their own – and then they can put it into a bottle and cork it or whatever. Chateau St. Brewer. Right. Chateau St. Brewer, <laughs> yeah. yeah. 2019. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was Yeah, as long as it doesn't smell like me, it'll have a terrible <laughs> bouquet, but, <laughs> but it, it's... Um, well, it's got great uh, legs, though. It's got great <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you noticed. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I think um, it, it gives business opportunities as well because yeah. it's, it's a product that is... You can get involved with it so cheaply. You don't need to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on filling equipment uh, if you don't know what you're doing. A botainer, like to say, um, Dave, uh, and we have uh, salespeople around the country, and in fact, around the world, and they can go to your facility, lend you equipment, and actually, you can you can fill the kegs, help you fill them. So you don't necessarily. Eventually, you'll get the expertise, you'll learn off these people. Sure, but you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. So you know that maybe the first time you think, oh, I'm going to give this a try. You buy the, the wine on the bulk market, okay, that, that's some investment there. You buy some kegs, and of course you're going to get the price of the keg back every time you, you sell it. No worrying about getting the keg back because it's a one-way keg. No worry about deposits because it's a one-way keg. And you, you can fill it and know that you're going to have a good product, and then you can sell it and make money. It's, it's a great, great opportunity for lots of people, and I really think that... Uh, Keg wine is the way to go in the future. It's exciting because I remember 20 years ago, they went from natural cork to synthetic cork. Right. And some people started turning their nose up the Right, yeah. And then screw tops came on the market. Uh, and now box wine. And people always had this kind of, you know, fear that it wasn't as good of a wine. Right. But the cool part about this is you're getting great wines. Right. Easily here, easily packaged, cheaper. So you're bringing down prices right. for me to be able to go buy this right. or the bar owner or the restaurant owner and to have some really high quality wines mm. or do your own Chateau Saint uh, Brewer blend. Brewer, yes. Yeah, no, there's just so many cool opportunities. Right. I think it's adding a little bit more flair, something new, right? which uh, I'm also excited about. It. And, and the beauty of the package is, as I say, it keeps the product fresh from the first glass to the last class. Yeah. So if you do have a product that you're very, very proud of, and it's the same really with all products, is when it leaves your facility, you you lose a, a control of it. And you certainly lose the control when someone opens a bottle of wine and they take it, they have a glass of it, and it's sitting on the shelf for a couple of days, and then someone else has a glass of it, and they don't like it because it, you know it's been oxidized or whatever. So, you know, the package really does a great job in keeping the products up to the tip top. Yeah, right. nothing's going to besmirch your brand. Nothing's going to besmirch your yeah. brand, yeah. yeah. So. Man, that's cool. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I really like what I've seen some of our customers doing. Uh, I think they've got some great ideas. Sure. Um, and it's just going to keep growing. It's just going to keep blowing up. Oh, I up. think so too, yeah. You know, there's that huge... Uh, Wine bulk show. There's two of them this year, right? Um, like Amsterdam and China, right? So I mean, you can see that this is this is definitely a market that's developing. Yeah, it's a market, and it, I think there's huge opportunities for people who just basically are looking for a new new thing to get into. And if they're in the restaurant industry, why wouldn't you do this? Why wouldn't you buy wine in kegs, in one way kegs that? Beauty, you know, I, I've worked in wine on steel kegs, 
you know, my, my background really is washing and, and, and filling kegs. And I worked with uh, uh, wineries back in the 80s. Cleaning red wine out of a keg <laughs> is not easy. Yeah. It's not yeah. easy. It stains like crazy. So yeah. um, the, the beauty of our keg, of course, it, there's nothing else being put, put in there beforehand. You guys clean it with club soda and salt, right? <laughs> <laughs> like my mom used to do on, the, on her uh, yeah. tablecloth yeah, in my really, pants. Not really. <laughs> but that, it's, it take, it's, it's a huge thing to do. And, and also, you know, the, the sugars can get in there and, and cause problems to the valves, etc. But, you know, we always say with our keg, a clean fill every time. Every time, yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah. it really is, and it makes a huge difference. Clean fill every time. It's going to help preserve and protect your product Product. from the first to the last glass. Yeah. And it's going to make the bar owner and restaurant owner happy because all they're getting rid of, they got to recycle one keg instead of cases of cardboard and bottles. Right. I love it. So, you know, there's there's good effect, pourability as well. The fact that you're going to be able to serve much faster than you would if it was out of a bottle. And when people are waiting for a drink, you know, the time's money. Right? Speaking of waiting for a drink, why are we drinking beer? Let's go have a glass of wine. <laughs> yeah, we can All do right. that, yeah. Screw you guys. We're done with you. We gave you enough info. Right. We had good enough time. We're going to give ourselves a glass of wine. Sound good? Yeah, sounds good All to right. me. Let's get rid of this. Cheers. Hey, thanks, guys. We're going to keep these potato podcasts coming to you guys. Uh, we're going to have new ideas. If you've got anything that you want us to talk about, shoot us an email. Hit us up on Twitter, Facebook. We're all over the place. Give us some ideas. Thanks for tuning in. See you.